I have some colleagues who work on a class of materials called MOFs. And what MOF stands for is Metal Organic Frameworks. These materials are a series of metal ions that have organic spaces separating those metal ions into a regular array. And the really amazing thing about these MOFs is they can have very large pore volumes inside of them so you could store gases in them or you might be able to sieve gases through them. If we could develop a porous solid that could be used within, for example, an automobile or in a train or in, in some automotive uh, capacity, we could actually use this to store hydrogen and develop new technologically important systems. If you burn hydrogen, the byproduct is water, which from a pollution standpoint is absolutely fantastic. But what is not practical to do is to have large cylinders of hydrogen in the boot of your car, because it's very heavy, it's difficult to pressurize up, it's just not going to be feasible. But if you have a material that can absorb hydrogen into itself, you could store the hydrogen and release it to power your vehicle. We also have other substrates such as SO2, sulfur dioxide. This is a very toxic gas that comes out of car exhausts together with NOx, NO2. We are looking actively to get systems that will capture those two gases and they will not then be emitted out of the exhaust. And my project is about designing metal organic frameworks for sulfur dioxide capture. Within a power plant, after a fossil fuel is burnt, there are systems that are units that are in place to try and um, scrub out any toxic gases. At the moment, this is using non-regenerable processes. So we are designing materials that will be regenerable, and therefore we can capture the SO2 and hopefully be able to release it again for further processing to be able to use it for useful things such as um, elemental sulfur or liquid SO2 or sulfuric acid for use in industry make your metal organic framework to have larger void space so then you can hopefully encapture as much as possible or you can functionalize the organic component to hopefully form a different species when the gas chemically binds to it so then you can maybe expel a less toxic gas from that. You may have a source of CO2 which you might want to use in a fire extinguisher but it might be contaminated with other gases that you don't really want to be in there. I think probably around 10 to 20 percent of the world energy consumption is spent on the separation of small molecule gases. So we also use this porous material to achieve the separation of gas mixtures at ambient or near ambient conditions. Basically, you have a metal ion on one hand and then uh, organic components on the other hand. And then by this uh, alternative linking between these two components, and then you end up this uh, kind of a three-dimensional structure. You have this uh, red-purple chain going along there. That is the metal oxide chain. And then you also have this uh, black chain going along there. So that's the organic components. So by this uh, alternative linking, between these two components, you form this uh, very nice uh, three-dimensional regular structure. And then if you look through that direction, you can see me because there are holes in there. So these holes are the most uh, critical feature of this type of material. We are very encouraged to collaborate with colleagues from chemical engineering, from materials, and from physics. For example, we are working with the, this uh, National Graphene Institute people trying to make a hybrid materials between graphene and the metal organic framework to tune their material stability and the properties. Because we have so many metals available to us in the periodic table, we can almost construct a molecular Lego, as it were, of three-dimensional porous structures. The potential applications for these materials 
is really enormous and really you're only limited by your imagination. Thank you.